Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. We are gonna be diving today back into our advanced blog and CMS. It's really good to be back, and I'm really excited about the future of this channel. Now, the reason I mention that is because a lot of people are worried that this um, series was going to go away. There was, I, I did consider getting rid of this series because of some complex issues that um, I'm not gonna bother wasting your time with right here, but if you guys are interested in kind of hearing what my thoughts are with the channel originally and why this series kind of fell by the wayside for a while. You can link in the in the description, I made an unlisted video. You guys can go watch um, with me just kind of going over some of those concepts and kind of explaining all of that. So if you guys are interested in that, go check out that video. Otherwise, for the rest of you guys, I'll just let you know that we are gonna be continuing the series. What we're gonna be doing though, what we're gonna do to change it up is I'm only gonna be posting videos that have relevant content. So if we've already covered topics before like basic crud and stuff like that, we will skip over those. If I'm just doing bug fixes and things like that, anything that's not overly noteworthy, we're gonna skip over that. I'm gonna film those on, or I'm just gonna work on those on my own time and that's gonna allow us to accelerate the speed of this project. Now, whenever I post a video, I'll let you guys know that what I did in between the last two videos and I will link, um, everything will still be on GitHub, so I will give you the link to GitHub where you can go and you can look at the diff files and if you have questions on any of the code I wrote, you can leave a comment there, I will answer the comment and then hopefully you guys can kind of follow along that way and that's gonna save us a lot of hours of content that is going to be kind of boring and unnecessary and so now when you see in your sub boxes, when you see um, a video pop up for this series, you know it's gonna be something new to learn, something that might be interesting and intriguing for you guys, instead of just boring bug fixes or something like that. Okay, now with all that being said, let's dive into today's video, and today we're gonna to be working on a bug fix, ironically. The only reason I wanted to film this one is because um, everybody's having problems with this, and I realized I made a small minor mistake, and so I wanna briefly talk about this so you guys don't make this mistake as well. Um, I realized it, Anyway, we'll talk about that. So what we're gonna be doing is updating the um, CSS framework that we were using. So when we first started this project, we started using Bulma, as you can see here, and we were using an older version than the current one we have right now. So we basically need to update the version. Now the reason it's kind of important is because these two versions were pretty big changes because they completely rewrote the navigation, which is an element that we were using, and they also added drop-down elements, which is something we had to kind of make work before. So I'm just gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull in the new version of the framework and then we're gonna go into the template file and just get the CSS up to date with the new version. And that's really all we're gonna be focusing on for today's video. So let's do it. So inside of our project, um, if we go ahead and look here, I'm gonna show you guys the mistake that I made. In all right, now inside of our project, if we take a look at our package.json file, you can see there's a couple things missing in here. And I, this is why everyone was having problems. This is what I wanted to talk about briefly. You'll notice in our de dev dependencies, we do not have Bulma and we do not have Buify, the two CSS frameworks we're kind of relying on. Now, um, this is why a lot of you guys were having problems, especially if you reran um, your Laravel mix, you were having problems is because you didn't have these frameworks and I failed to actually save the framework into our package.json file. So what happened is after you guys cloned it from GitHub, you couldn't, and you ran an NPM install, it wasn't installing the packages that I had previously installed because I hadn't saved them in the package.json, so I had only saved them locally. So make sure that you don't fall mistake, you don't you know make the same mistake that I did. And so when you do this now, when you do an NPM install, um, in this case Bulma, make sure you do a dash dash save or a dash dash save dev in this case because it, we, only, we only need it as a dev dependency. The reason we only need it as a dev dependency is because when we push to production, we're not gonna, we don't need any of these dev dependencies because things like Bulma and Buify, they're gonna get compiled into our app.css and our app.js and we don't do those compilings on, um, we don't do that compilation on the production server, we do that locally and then we compile the app.css and js and then push that to the cloud. So the server doesn't need any of those dev dependencies because the framework is inside of the app.css file, if that makes sense. And the buify is inside of app.js. So we don't need to bring in the raw framework because they're already inside of our compiled uh, files. Now, also I'm not going to be using NPM 
if you um there are some uh i mean uh there are some political differences that are going on right now with um the team over at npm they're getting involved in some really sketchy stuff and they're just their team is just motivated in many of the wrong ways and i just don't like that they're using their organization to push certain political views and I just, I just think it's wrong. And so I'm very much against NPM right now. And I do not want to really um, involve them. And if they go defunct, the world would be a better place, in my opinion. So I'm just going to be using Yarn from now on. Luckily, the internet is a place of choice. And we have the choice to do this. So um, I'm just going to be using Yarn. And Yarn is actually a superior product anyway. It's faster. It's um, You don't have to remember to save your dependencies and make the mistake that I had. Because if you do an yarn add which is the equivalent to npm install um, it will automatically save into your package.json so you don't need to make to remember to do dash dash save and so um, that's one big benefit to yarn plus it's faster it's better in just about there's really no reason to use npm honestly yarn is honestly better in every single way now the reason i had not used i had stopped using yarn because i was using yarn for everything i stopped and went back to npm was because laravel mix was having a problem with yarn for a while but that seems to be fixed it seems to work just fine so i'm back to using yarn so we're just going to do a yarn add bulma and then normally that's okay that would save it into your package.json now we do need to pass in a flag because we just want it as a dev dependency not as a normal dependency so just do dash dash dev to tell it to save it as a dev file and then it will go ahead and run and you'll see it's much much faster obviously than npm that would have taken like two minutes on npm so um now let's go ahead and also um yarn add buify dash dash dev so we're using the buify uh that's the view bulma framework so we want to go ahead and add that and this should give us both of these two dependencies you can actually see the project updated down here we now have bulma and buify updated okay so there we go. So these are both up to date. We're using the current versions uh, 0.5.3, which I believe was, that is the current version of both of them. So uh, 0.5.3, okay? So now we got that up to date and we have the new packages. So the next thing we wanna do is just run a Laravel mix command to recompile it. And then we'll have all of the new versions inside of our app.css and app.js. So once again, just do yarn run, uh, we can just do run watch is or just do run dev. Okay, let's go ahead and let that run. All right, so you inevitably run into problems whenever you update something like your Laravel version. So Laravel 5.4 to 5.5. I did run into a problem here where I had this error when running uh, yarn dev, run, yarn run dev. And the problem is actually they changed some of the the scripts that need to be ran. So you can see here in the new version of Laravel, um, we have the scripts have changed significantly. So I went through and just copied the, these two blocks in my package.json and then um, added them in here. So these now match the new version. Um, the scripts are actually significantly different. So um, we have to run it this new way. So I just want to mention that for anyone that has that similar problem. This happens whenever you update versions, you're going to run into these small little problems. So now that we have that, did I save that file? I did. Okay, good. So let's uh, run this again. All right, so let's go ahead and run this again. All right, so we run into another problem this time. It's with font awesome. So it looks like font awesome. Um, I probably have the same problem. I did not put it in the dev dependencies, so now it's not inside of our node modules. At least that's my guess. Let's go look for it. So I'm guessing if we go all the way down to F, font awesome. I don't. Um, I do not see it. Yep, it's not there. Okay, so I must have added font awesome through npm. From what it's looking like, it's trying to find it in my node modules and I, it's not there. So we need to add it. So let's go ahead and do it. Yarn add font awesome. So yarn add font awesome dash dash dev. Let's go ahead and bring that in. There we go. And now let's try for the hundredth time yarn run dev. There we go, it works, yay. Um, so 
this is actually one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because I know a lot of people get stuck on these types of issues and I wanted to help kind of walk you through the process. So now you guys know, hopefully no one gets stuck on that anymore. Um, so with that being done, we now have an updated, our app.js and app.css file are up to date with the new versions of Bulma and Buify. So now there wasn't really any change to Buify, I don't think, it wasn't that big of a deal, but um, the one components that we do need to change in Bulma is the navigation. So to do that, um, elements maybe, where's navigation at? Nav bar, I think this is the one that, yes, the nav bar. Okay, so nav bar has changed a little bit. You can see the net new nav bar replaces the depreciated nav component. This is what we were using was the depreciated nav component. You can temporarily see it here, but let's go ahead and just change it and get to this new structure. But we're gonna change all of this, of course, inside of our template file. So let's just go into our layouts and then our management, wait, the app file. All right, now from here, what we wanna do is just kind of fix this navigation, this top navigation, and then obviously the dropdown. These are the components that definitely need to get fixed. Everything else I think is gonna be okay. So what we can do here is let's go through and fix it inside of this um, navigation dot main uh, partial file. And then that's actually it. I think everything will be inside of there. So let's go into our nav main. And then we, here's where we wanna fix it. So you can see we're using nav element with the nav class. Now, according to Bulma here, we now wanna be using a nav bar as our main container and then everything else like that. So, okay, now we do need to pull this out from what it appears. It looks like the new style has nav bar brand and then you have your nav bar main. So, or nav bar menu, nav bar dash menu. Okay, and the nav bar start is the left hand of the menu, nav bar end is the right hand. So for us, we wanted to put these items up here in nav bar start. And then nav, I think this will still work. All right, so I think everything's looking good. Let's see, we just have nav bar item, nav bar item. These are only guests see those. We can actually change this now in Laravel. You can just do if guest, and then we'll do um, else actually, we'll be fine. And then we'll, at the bottom we need to do end guest. That's some Laravel 5.5 magic. Uh, what else do we got here? So then we have our button. This is for our dropdown. So there is actually a dropdown that's in Laravel in the new version of Bulma now we could use. Um, and it's a good looking dropdown. So let's take a look at it here. Okay, so this is our dropdown. So the way that this dropdown appears to work, it looks like we do a div. So let's get rid of, let's make those a div. And then we've got Okay, so I think we've done everything. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in the browser and see how how uh, messed up it is. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any of these. None of these are showing up. Oh wait, we, these are hidden tablet. Okay, hold on. There we go, now they show up. Okay, not bad. Um, I think they need, that's not bad, not bad at all. Now let's go through and fix some of the, I think there's some jQuery messing this up. So then let's go through and do our assets, our JavaScript, app.js, and yep, right here. Let's just go through and mess and delete this. And let's also recompile um, yarn. Okay, hold on, let me, um, let me make sure I'm not overriding this has dropped down. That might be messing this up. So let's uh, go into our, um, our SAS and I think our overrides. 
drop down, drop down menu. So we can probably override all of this. In fact, let's go ahead and just, actually none of this will matter either. Okay, let's go through, we're gonna comment out all of this. And then we're gonna comment out all of this. So this is our drop down menu that we don't need anymore. Um, there we go, ran. Let's go check this in the browser. Some reason our navigation isn't showing up. I don't know why. Um, nav bar drop down is right. Let's just double check to make sure we're doing everything right here. Oh, okay, hold on, that's the problem. It's this div, this closing div is in the wrong place. Okay, so this needs to wrap the entire drop down, which makes total sense. Okay, so there we go. So the problem was it wasn't wrapping, our, our div ended before we actually put this whole navbar drop down element. So now let's go over and take a look. And there we go, now it's working. Um, yeah, it appears to be working just fine. Now, we might wanna change some of the colors here. There's some minor CSS things that we might wanna change, but otherwise we've basically updated everything to uh, the new version of Laravel. So we can actually go through, or the new version of um, Bulma and everything like that. So we can actually go through and clear out all this stuff that's commented. We don't need any of this anymore. That trimmed up our CSS quite a bit. There we go, just like that. We also, let's see, we already killed our app, our JavaScript. So the JavaScript we had that was creating our drop-down menu, we don't need anymore. And we could also get rid of in our bootstrap, we really, I do not intend to use jQuery. So we can actually get rid of jQuery too. I'm just gonna comment it out for now. Um, but let's go ahead and clear out, that'll clear out our app.js and make it a lot smaller. So, um, our app.js is down to one megabyte. It was up to, can we see? 1.27, I guess. So we cut off a quarter of a meg. So that's it for this today's episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. Be sure to stay tuned for other great content coming on this channel other than the, just this series, but we still have more great content coming from this series as well. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video.